The topic of the session today is transparency on our farms. Joining me on the stage today, we have three people that have been very active. We have Chris Souls, we have Aaron Brenneman, and we have Tom Titus. You know, the Pork Board has done a number of initiatives that we are trying to, consumers today are definitely wanting to know what we're doing on their farms. And so the, the topic of our conversation today and what this panel is going to discuss is how we can open up our barn doors and let people know what we're doing on our farms. We've got a number of things we're doing at the National Pork Board, Operation Main Street, where we empower producers to go out and give them the tools to talk to community groups. Uh, we also have social media using the hashtag Real Pig Farming. So on our panel today, just in a little bit, I'm going to tell you, uh, we'll let Aaron and Chris and, and Thomas talk about and, and answer the question and talk about their operations. But I'm going to tell you a little bit how this is going to work. we got some questions, and we're going to let them answer the questions. We also, if you've got a question from the audience oops, that you, excuse me, that you want to ask, if we get through our questions we've kind of got that we would like them to answer, and you've got a question, by all means, get them to Claire Masker or Mike King, uh, and, and let's ask them the questions. So with that... I'd like to have our panel introduce himself and let's have some fun today. Good morning, everyone. It's great to be here and uh, be back in Iowa and not dancing and back to back to farming and uh, being here and being a part of the uh, World Pork Expo and uh, getting back to being able to discuss important issues that uh, we as producers know and deal with every day, whether it's markets or the challenges that uh, the the public throws at us in, in challenging our uh, our industry. Um, uh, today is about uh, you know, celebrating the uh, successes that we've had and uh, also promoting youth interaction and getting them involved in uh, a really cool industry that we're a part of. Um, a little bit about my farming operation. Well, I farm in northeast Iowa, uh, Fayette County, and uh, we farm about 5,000 acres. Uh, we also raise, finish about 20,000 hogs a year. Um, and uh, one of the first things I did after graduating uh, college was by my first build my first uh, hog building 2400 head building and uh, you know it was a great opportunity for me as a young guy to get my first step into agriculture and start building equity and and uh, you know those are some of the things that we can uh, you know the story that we need to continue to tell what uh, what we can how young people can get involved in agriculture and and raising pigs is a big a great way to do that so with that I'm excited to talk with all of you and uh, and, and it's great to be here thank you Hi, I'm, is this on? Can you hear me? Yep, yep. Okay. I'm Erin Brenneman. Um, I did not grow up on a farm. I actually grew up in a suburb of Chicago. So um, for most of my life, I thought food came from the grocery store. Uh, I attended Iowa State University, and I met my husband. And didn't know he was my husband at the time, but <laughs> fell in love, <laughs> got married, um, and came back to his family farm. And my eyes were open to um, this world of agriculture and I was really amazed by the things that um, we do as farmers every day to put food on people's plate. So um, that kind of struck a, a passion in me to, to share that with people because I, I understand the misconceptions firsthand um, just by living it my entire life. So um, I've got two boys and um, Mention the kids. Uh, two boys and our farm. We have just about just over twenty thousand sows, and um, I run a piglet maternity ward, as I like to explain it to people. <laughs> um, but I also try to do the the public re relations and and share our farm's story. And I'm really passionate about that through farm tours and social media and all sorts of stuff. Hey, Thomas. Hi, my name is Thomas Titus, and I'm a pig farmer from Elkhart, Illinois where we have a 750 sow farrow to finish operation. We also have, we farm about 1,700 acres of corn and soybeans, but we're also bringing the diversification back to our farm. We like to give Fair Oaks farms a run for their money um, with the different tours that we can provide from goats, cows, chickens, pigs, and we had a rabbit, we had to cancel that tour last week. <laughs> um, but most importantly on our farm, we raise our children. Um, we're a multi-generational family farm, and we really embrace the opportunity to be able to bring back that next generation to my wife's family farm. It's something that we're extremely passionate about, where I farm with my father-in-law, Dave Conradi, and my brother-in-law, Brett Conradi. And it's a great opportunity to raise our children in a, a nurturing environment where we can begin to build some of those core character values so they can come back to our farm and be a value add 
And it's something that's extremely important to us and that we're extremely passionate about. And it's real, I'm really excited to be here today to talk about how we share our stories on social media because as we get, begin to move forward and that generational gap continues to widen, it's only going to become more important for my daughters and my nephews to continue this passion and continue to share our farm stories and what we're doing um, to help reach out to the consuming public that doesn't have that relationship with agriculture and doesn't have Aaron Brenman that she can reach out to uh, through a text message or a Travis Brink with Tyson Foods that we can talk to about what's going on in the pork markets where we can really begin to understand where the food's coming from and really begin to build that relationship with our consumers. And that's something that we're really trying to do as advocates, um, respectively, a little bit differently, but we all have the same passion and the same goals. Okay, well, well, thank you. And there was kind of a little bit of background. And, and uh, I guess one thing, and as farmers, none of us are comfortable being transparent. You know, we've always, you know, let's, let's just do our day-to-day -day business. And, and that has got to change. Consumers are demanding that. We need to build trust. And so there's a whole lot of different levels of transparency. And I guess I'd start out with Chris, and you probably have been more transparent than anybody. But now we're going to talk about the farm. But can you tell us what transparency on your farm means to you? And, and uh and tell us about your farm story and, and what transparency and how you do that. Yeah, uh, I took transparency to a whole other level, I believe, uh, <laughs> in life and on my farming operation. Uh, going through this process and, and being on the bachelorette was that was my first taste of true transparency and bringing people from LA to to my farm and, and having them see what we do here. And it was really uh, it was it was kind of opened my eyes to how important it is for us to truly to, to work harder at telling our story because everybody came and, and saw the farming operation and they, their perceptions when they got there were you know totally changed after they left. You know, typically they they're either thinking it's you know something but five pigs and five cows and just a small operation and, or it's it's large corporate farming factory farms and that sort of thing and they don't that when, once they uh, were able to see what we had going on it, it I think it totally changed the way they viewed agriculture awesome awesome Aaron would you like to elaborate and you you've been very active and and transparency to you about exposing your farm. Great. Right. I, I always like to elaborate. I'm go. sorry. Go. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it, it, you know, transparency for us is incredibly important, but at the same time, it, it's very easy. You know, when you're, you're passionate about what you do and, and you believe in what you're doing, you know, you have nothing to hide, and it's very easy to share that sort of thing. Um, you know, and I think people really appreciate the transparency and, and opening the farm doors and, and letting you come in, just see what we do. I and mean, we believe in what we do. We, we don't want to hide anything from anybody. And, and people really do appreciate that openness, definitely. Thomas? I mean, if you look back at my Facebook uh, news feed about a year ago, I mean, I took a few pictures. I wasn't overly active on social media. And then there was this young lady by the name of Claire Masker that sent me an email saying, hey, we're doing this really cool thing with hashtag real pig farming. And that was really like a springboard. And that's what really began to inspire me and really began to push me to start making this more of a priority every single day. And the thing is, it doesn't take a lot of time. I mean, we all have smartphones. We all have the capability to post a picture onto Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or whatever you guys are comfortable with utilizing. And it's a great way to share what we're doing on our farms, um, whether we're farrowing pigs like Aaron every day, um, or we're grinding feed, or we're planting corn and soybeans, or we're trying to share some of the technologies that we're using. Um, it's a great way, and it's a, a very broad community that we can begin to tap into to tell our farm stories and talk about what we're doing and reach out to that non-farming public and really begin to increase that trust and transparency that we've lost uh, with generational uh, generations being removed from agriculture. And utilizing social media really helps give that opportunity uh, to begin to further share our shories, stories, and that's something that's really important to us. One of the things, Thomas, and I know we talked about a little bit of last night, is, is you, you do something kind of unique of sharing your story. I don't know if you want to talk on that now. That was a, that's been a, that's, that's quite that's Yes. Uh, one way that we do that on our farm, and a specific example, is we have a purebred Yorkshire gilt. Um, her name is Petunia the Pig. You can follow her on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at hashtag Petunia the Pig. I've taken a picture of Petunia every single day since she was born. And now, actually, um, the intent of Petunia, she was going to be shown, uh, and she's going to be a mother herself. So, I mean, 
at the same time, she is a food animal, but she is going to be a mother. And the young man that actually owns her today was in the crowd. But Caleb uh, Kaiser, a young man from southern Illinois, is going to show, Ka- or show Petunia for us at State Fair. And he's going to raise her and he's going to fair her. And he's done a great job with keeping up with taking pictures of Petunia every day. And really what the, the entire purpose of the program is really not only to share what we're doing on our farms and showing what Petunia experiences every single day, but inspire that next generation of advocates, give them that in additional inspiration and give them that additional fuel to understand why it's important to share what you're doing on the farms. Because some of those things that we do may seem like very mundane tasks, whether we're dumping a feed bucket or we're checking bulk tanks or we're making sure that last batch of feed was ground. Um, our consumers are extremely interested about those things, about how we're raising their food, how it's getting to their table. And uh, Petunia the pig is just one way that we do that and how we share our farm story. Okay, excellent. I, I just thought that was a neat story. I mean, to, to tie an animal in with it and let people have fun and to show your kids. And, and so there's different ways. I mean, we have Thomas using a, a, a pig to, to get some more followers. And Chris obviously bringing out a lot of people from all over the, all over the country to his farm. And I guess, Aaron, I'd start with you on this question here. How do you get over that initial hesitation to, to get into social media? Or what Joe Thomas said, the real pig hashtag, it was kind of what got him fired up. What was the thing that got you over that hesitation that I'm going to get involved with this? Yeah, I mean, the real pig, um, real pig farming hashtag has been really neat. Um, to me, like I said before, it, it's just my experience growing up and never having to even drive past a farm necessarily. And I know there's so many people like that. Um, and, and that's my, my drive and motivation to, to share what we do because it, it's amazing what we do every day. It really is. And it's and it's so beautiful. And, and I do it through pictures, maybe not necessarily petunia, like pictures of sunrises and sunsets and you know everything about the farm around the farm like i said you you know we raise pigs that's that's the easy part maybe not the easy part but you know i mean you know that we're there raising pigs and so that's important to share but it's also very important to share everything else about us you know we are a family farm and we do family stuff and you know we have uh, i have one particular um post i had was bald eagles there was bald is crazy there's bald eagles everywhere this just spring. It, they were everywhere. And I, so I took pictures of the bald eagles all over this tree right by our farm. It was like one of the most shared, I mean, it's probably nothing staggering probably to your numbers, but like on the Brenham and Pork side, it was very well shared. Um, but, and it had nothing Believe to do me, with you don't want some of my followers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, I guess should be thankful. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it was a little frustrating because I'm like, we're a pig farm and people are following us to learn about, and all you guys share is something about bald eagles. But at the same time, you know, I think it showed how well-rounded and, and you know, we are real people living in a real world thing. I mean, what it does is it gives us an opportunity to personalize who we are. I mean, we're not just as the connotation of a factory farm. I mean, we're families. I mean, 97% of all farms are family farms, and it gives us an opportunity to share that other side. I mean, that personalized side of what we're doing on our farms, how we're raising our families, and how passionate we are about bringing that next generation back. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, uh, well, if you want, yeah, you, you bet. No, I sure do. That's a, yeah. um, I uh, I'm, I can relate to a lot of farmers out there, and that I really had no interest in being a part of social media, and uh, and and being put into being a public figure. Now that I am, I sort of was thrust into that role, and uh, then I it's been really neat to to start to post things about agriculture and take away. You know, I'm not on a, I'm not a TV star, and that's that's not me. I'm a farmer, and putting that, those things out there. Everybody wants more. I see the comments. People want more and more. So it's been really cool to be able to share what what my passion is, and uh, and and what I want to do going forward is to help tell that story. And I think it's important for all of us to to uh, to, uh, to to begin to do that. To, and uh, and I think that people really re- will respond positively if we continue to to show the awesome story that we have to tell. Very good. Maybe what we need to do is get Chris and just start dispensing some of them followers on him, and get him. We'll, we'll get a, we'll get a little bit to everybody out here. But you know, and, and and we had some good comments. And and by all means, if you've got a question, make sure you get it to Mike or Claire. I mean, we're going to have time to get some of your questions. So by all means, get them to each side of the room. I guess we talked about the comments and and positive comments. How do you and, and everybody? We've all seen some negativity out there in the industry and some things. How do you guys keep it positive? And and I guess if you could elaborate on. You know, you get some negative comments, do you respond to them, and if it keeps going, or first thing, how do you keep your social media positive? 
Whoever wants to go. <laughs> I get a few negative comments, okay, but it's not go. relating to farming, typically. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Chris. Why don't you, I mean, so do you respond to some of them, or I guess yours is a little different case, but please. Yeah, please uh, I, I guess I just keep it positive by putting up pictures that, uh, that are pretty hard to, you know, give a negative comment to. I mean, there's so much positive that's, that we have that we see every day that most people don't get to see. And uh, so I, I focus on, you know, like she said, the sunsets and, and the views from the tractor and things like that that, uh, uh, you know, just, just show the positive things about agriculture. Uh, one day I, 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 would take, I took a picture of my commute from my apartment to the dance studio in L.A., and it was just packed with cars every morning. It, it was a three-mile drive, but it took me 30, 40 minutes. And, uh, you know, it got kind of irritating, and I posted a picture and, uh, about that. And then when I got home, the first thing I did was hop in a tractor and go and, and, uh, and plant corn. And I took a picture of that commute, uh, and that was my morning commute once I got home. And it was, you know, it got 30,000, 40,000 likes. Both of them did. So it was, it was uh, you know, to see the, the differences of what our lifestyle is compared to what it is in the city and, and just informing people of the positives that we do that agriculture has. Exactly. Very good. And, and we think of that. And as farmers, you know, there's so many things that are positive every day we're doing on the farm. And, and don't think that people aren't interested in that. So very good comment. Erin, how do you keep yours positive? Because yeah. you're showing production stuff. You're showing right. whatever. And, and how do you keep the, your social media positive? And, and once again, I bounce back to the, to the every, everything that we really are. Not necessarily, you know, it, it, and I don't feel like social media has to be attacking burning issues. I mean, by any means. It's just it's showing who you are. Uh, um, rounding yourself out so the people know you and trust you. And then if they have a question, they can come to you and ask you about those burning issues. And then you are, once again, you are a reliable source for them. Because Google is not a reliable source. <laughs> and, and, um, and we need to be, you know, farmers need to be the voices about farming. And so, it, and it, like you said, it's just showing all those little things that you see that catches your eye and makes you think, maybe think about every day. <laughs> and, um, and that's what I think people appreciate. And so the negative stuff, they're just, they've got nothing really to say, nothing new. And I tell like, these guys, I'm like, we have a different new fun story every single day. And that's such a neat thing for us to have. And so sometimes it's irritating, but it has to just be... Look, brush past it, Thomas. You probably deal with it more than I even do. You, you, you probably. I might more bring it upon myself sometimes more than I should. <laughs> okay, cool. Because I mean, our negative detractors are typically pretty loud and boisterous, and whenever they they are, and they sometimes can be very vicious. They like to cut right to your core. But a lot of those times, those people on Twitter are just an egg. They're nobody. So you have to begin to understand the conversations you really want to engage in. But it's sometimes those tough conversations that you have to have. It's those bystanders that are watching that that you really can help make that impression on. It might not be fun. It might not be comfortable. But sometimes you have to have those type of conversations with people on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram uh, to continue to broaden your outreach and educate um, the general consumer about where their food's coming from. And it's extremely important to, to continue to do that. I think uh, it's also, I mean, if, if you just want to post pictures and and you know, have fun with it and and show people and make it because I think it adds a level of personal. It adds a personable level. I mean, I think people are so disconnected; they don't know who who farmers are right now. They don't know. They they think factories and, and they they don't think about family. You know, they don't think about family farms. They think about factory farms, and that's the that's what we need to we we can squash that very easily by showing what's really going on. And I, and I think they made some good points. And, you know, with putting a face on behind the food. You know, I just related one of my, I, I spoke to a group down in Texas, I think it was, and, and this gal, when I got done talking, she says, uh, Brad, she says, I trust what you're doing. And she had no idea who I was from Adam. She said, I trust what you're doing, but how do I know all the rest of the pork producers or pork pig farmers are doing the same thing? And she didn't know me, but it was putting a face on. And that's what these three are doing is putting a face on farming and what they're doing every day. And so that's really what it takes is opening up and doing that. Erin has got a little different perspective. I mean, she come from the city, and so she's probably got a, a lot of friends that, you know, that she can do. My wife's in the same situation. She said, Brad, you get up and talk, and I'll do the tweeting and the Facebook. But, again, from the city. And so she's got friends that have no connection to the farm, 
And, and so it's a unique opportunity. And so we've got a great cross-section here of people. So Aaron? Yeah, and I've had several opportunities just from friends back home wanting to come and see our farm. And so that's like, to me, if one person has done that, I've, I've done my job. And, and so, you know, if come to me instead of going somewhere else, um, I've done my job. And offering personal interaction, maybe not recommended in your situation. But in ours, <laughs> offering a personal interaction is a huge, very powerful thing um, for anybody that has questions. Whether it may seem hostile or not, um, oftentimes is, is really a phone call, like we've lost personal interaction, phone call or a farm visit is very powerful in that situation. Okay, very good. Well, we've got some questions from the audience, and keep coming um, if you do. This one here says, with social media, media being so big now, how have you dealt with negative comments? We talked about the positive, and a couple of you touched on the negative comments. Of, and they say about GMOs, and so GMOs, and, and, and we're talking about pig farming too. So would somebody like to tackle that? We've talked about some positive and touched on the negative, but you want to elaborate on some negatives of whether there's GMOs, pig farming, I get negative comments on GMOs every day, but I honestly, I just don't go there. I, 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 I don't think that I could, when people post negative comments on social media, I just, I don't necessarily use it to, to create an argument because I really can't in my position. Um, uh, it just, it, it, and I don't think you could really truly convince someone when they, when they have those kind of opinions, sometimes that's a fight that, I'm not. I'm not willing to tackle. You know, it, it, but uh, I think there are people out there that. You know, I think Thomas, you probably are a little more proactive in taking that battle on than than I probably am. When you get thirty thousand likes on one post and probably a thousand comments, it's probably tough to keep up. Whenever we only have a couple hundred likes and like ten comments, it's a lot easier for us to keep up with responding to those. So, but yeah, whenever we do get negative comments like that. It depends upon the type of question, who it's coming from. If it's a real person, I always try to respond to that question. I mean, if they have a real heartfelt question about why we're doing something, I always try to respond. Um, but if it's somebody that doesn't have a personal picture up there, it doesn't seem like it's a real person, it's just somebody trying to uh, detract away from what, we're do what I'm doing on my Facebook page, how I'm trying to share my story. Usually I won't field those conversations, but whether it's GMOs, antibiotics, the type of housing systems we utilize for our pigs. I mean, I, I try to be open and very transparent to help build that trust with our consumers. And if they have a real question, I try to answer it. Hey, you got to learn to filter what's uh, um, somebody who's just misinformed versus somebody who's being disrespectful. And, and learn to filter that and kind of not prioritize, but uh, answer them in that way. And I think my goal with social media personally is just to try to continually spread the message of the good things that are out there. There's always going to be that that percentage that is going to disagree with certain things, but if we continually make it personal, then I think we can make a, a lot of strides in, in, in our industry. And, and, uh, and those, those, those conversations about GMOs and those sort of things are things that we need to have, but uh, can, just using it for simply making it positive, and that's, that's what and, and, and I ignore the negative. Okay. Very good, very good comment. And, and, and sometimes pick your battles, you know? And, and I think they've alluded to that too. Don't go there if you, and so anyway. Great, more questions coming from the audience here. How has social media changed for you on the farm today versus a year ago? Uh, social media for me, it really doesn't add to our uh, number of pigs born per year, or pigs per shot <laughs> per year. Um, but it's something that's extremely important. You have to realize that there is uh, intrinsic value to it um, that goes beyond yourself. It's not something that's a, always a value add, but it ensures that there's going to be an opportunity for that next generation because our consumers have real questions. They have real concerns about where their food's coming from, and that's only going to continue to occur. It's only going to continue that generational gap to broaden. So I think it's extremely important to show what we're doing on our farm, whether it's through simple pictures or hosting on-farm tours or uh, through interviews or phone calls with direct consumers. Um, it's very important to continue to have that passion and um, utilize social media as a tool because it's such a broad community. I mean, Chris can reach out to hundreds of thousands of people, and I think I can reach out to maybe like 2,000 people. So it's a great tool to be able to share our farm story, and that community is just so broad. I mean, you can reach people from across the world about what we're doing on our farms, and their questions and concerns are real. So it's a great platform to, to talk about and harbor that conversation. 
Jeremy. Thomas, we've actually added pigs per sale per year since I've been doing social media. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I'm just <laughs> No, um, I, I, the social media, what that has done is. Wait, hang on. <laughs> I know. You have to speak up, though. <laughs> Can you hear me over that? Probably not. Yeah, go ahead. No, you're okay, good. Yeah, sorry. We're good. Um, it is it made us a reliable place to go for. Uh, it has opened up opportunities to bring some really amazing people through our firm. Let's just put that, and we've become a reliable source for that, and influential people um, that you want to see what it's really like. And and you know, I'm been pretty proud of that to say that you know we're able to to bring through some of these people that we do and not only that but the young minds too and the younger people that want to see what it's all about I, I, I mean to me that's just very exciting to have them come and see it all now I, now I know of Chris's plan he's probably got auto steered so he can sit there and comment now I have not figured out how Thomas and Aaron are going to pull pigs and still be responding to comments but remember the, the they've been able to figure out how to do it I'm still working on oh, it oh there you go there you go yeah. Let's go to another question here, and it says, uh, what would you tell those people who are hesitant to share their farm story, especially the larger farms, and whatever that means? But, you know, it's always, it seems like, you know, the, the larger ones, and again, whatever number that is, or the confinement, and, and how do we get those involved, and, and um, how can you encourage people in our audience to share their story, and especially the larger ones, or maybe the things that are a little controversial now? Wants to touch on it. A farm isn't defined by its size. It's defined by the people who run it and the passion that they have. So if you're a, I'm a 750 South Farrow to finish operation and Aaron's a 20,000 South Farrow to finish operation, that size difference is huge. But we still have the same passion. We still have the same goals. And it's about family. It's about sharing what we do and having a passion for bringing back that next generation. And, and that's really what it's about. It doesn't matter how big of a farm that you are. It doesn't mean that the connotation is going to be different. I'm quite a bit smaller than what Aaron is, and I get the exact same type of pressure. Um, but you still have to be positive, as we tried to talk about earlier. I mean, we're showing the good things that we're doing on our farms, and, and that's what's really nice. I mean, we, we do great things every day. There's something new every day that we do on our farms um, that's extremely interesting to our consumers. So, um, I mean, that's really what we try to do. Chris, would you like to talk on that? Yeah. Um, I, my experience with this has been obviously different. When they my thrust into the public eye was one of the first things they wanted me to tell them about the farm everybody about what my farming operation was like and and part of that was you know telling them how many acres we farmed and how many pigs we finished and it, I was hesitant at first and I didn't really know how I didn't really want to say that's how I've been my dad is you know most farmers are but at the end of the day I felt like that was the only way to really give the public a true perspective on what farming is today. I mean, there's large farms and small farms, but just because we farm 5,000 acres and finish 20,000 pigs and doesn't mean we're a factory farm. I mean, I think that's where that perspective needs to be changed and, uh, you know, giving everybody that that idea what a farm size, a typical farm size is today, because we're still a family farm, still ran by my dad and my mom and I and, and, and a few employees. But uh, I think it uh, getting over that hump is is important and uh, I think we need to be proud of whatever farm size it is like like Thomas said it's not about the size it's about it's not about the size not about the <laughs> <laughs> well I was going to go to Aaron with this next question I'm not I'm not real sure she's going to be able to continue on that answer but anyway Aaron how can we get the large farms <laughs> I work on a south farm every day right I, can I can play along <laughs> Um, Go ahead, Aaron. No, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I, you know, I guess I think as far as the consumer is concerned, if, if you have more than a couple pigs outside, you are a factory farm. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know what the definition is either, uh, necessarily, you know, but Thomas and I, like you said, you know, we're all different sides, but, you know, we still seem to get along. Uh, and, and I think it's important for us to remember that as producers, that we cannot start to pit ourselves against each other in, in that way. You know, there is a place for everybody. And I think that that's very important to stress. Um, you know, and that we, we all need to be together in our different styles, whatever is best for us. Um, that being said, no way is better than the other, necessarily. It's all, it's all how, 
how you raise pigs and, and how passionate you are about it. Um, and so, yeah, yeah, I know I, I, run, I run into that quite often. But you, and I keep going back to that. That's why it's important for me to share all those other things about us um, to shape the shape that vision of who we really are. And then, oh, by the way, here, and if you have questions, we can show you. And, and, and I think that's, that's fun. And I think the panel brought up a great point here. We see it in the, the pork industry, the diversity. And so it's important that everybody, whatever size you are, to post out there, whether you're a 4-H show pig person, whether you're a very large integrator, whether you're a contract finisher, post stuff out there, let people know that the diversity of the industry, and it's no different whether it's crops, uh, you know, what it is, all sizes, and whoever made the point, whether it was Aaron about we can't be pitting one farmer against the other, there's room for everybody, and that's, we've got choices, and let's, and let's appreciate that. Another question from the audience is, have you found that a person with a negative comment is surprised when you actually respond? And then are they open to two-way engagement? I mean, they throw a comment out there, and you respond, does that take them by surprise, or... Uh, Comment on that. Well, be I mean, sometimes it does. There was one egg on Twitter that I actually harbored a conversation with. And whenever I say egg, that's typically I consider they're not a real person. They're someone that's just a detractor. But I had harbored a conversation with them for probably about a week. They continued to ask PM our personal message questions about what we do on our farm. And every single time, they would try to scaffold to a different place. But every single time, I responded in a positive way. I responded to their question respectfully. And why I continued to have that conversation they didn't take that down a dark path. They didn't start dropping, using curse words. They didn't say I was the worst person in the world. And by having that conversation, I mean, I found out about their family, where they were from, and began to really understand who they were, even though their entire purpose on Twitter was to defame us as farmers. And I think I really began to have a breakthrough with maybe not all farmers are so bad. Maybe we do have some compassion for our animals. And we are out there trying every day to, to be able to raise a, a safe and nutritious meal not only for our own families because we're going to the same grocery stores but theirs as well and that's something that's extremely important. Aaron I'm going to let you go next on this one so if you want to throw something that's embarrassing you go right ahead. <laughs> that wasn't embarrassing I'm going. Um, no uh, per personal interaction so um, usually I, we, you know, we'll off, I, I will offer hey give us a call this is really hard to do you know, in 140 characters at a time, here, you know, or or on Facebook, you know, just call office. We'll talk with you. We have no problem with that. But I he can't type that fast and, and explain that. Um, and usually, usually, um, they kind of, they go away, which is a little disappointed. You know, kind of really, but a little disappointing because, you know, there was an opportunity for them to see. But I, I I think they, most people do appreciate that. We offer farm visits to whoever wants to come out and see that, and, and people really do appreciate that. Um, or it's a good way to get them to disappear if you want them to. <laughs> so they don't, want to, they don't want to see your face. They don't want to know who you are. Um, but the people that have honest questions do, and they appreciate that. And, and Aaron is obviously taking it to the next level, literally open her doors up. I mean, I'm sure you got all the, the protocol, but letting people come out and let them actually see what goes on in the farm. And so that's stepping it up the next nut. Chris, negative, I mean, are people surprised when you respond to a negative comment, or do you, and, and your situation's different, but um, then we'll go to another question. Yeah, I think I, I, I'm more on the stance where I, I just haven't gone there with a lot of that, uh, with responding to some of the negative comments. I get negative comments all over the board, so I, I, I honestly don't read a lot of comments because sometimes that can be depressing. Okay, okay. <laughs> Get back well, that's on. true, though. I mean, I don't. I mean, I almost make it a policy. I'm like, I don't read comments unless somebody brings it to my attention. Like, did you see that comment? Usually, like you guys in Faces of Farming, Thomas and I are both uh, Faces of Farming and Ranching for USFRA, and that we'll talk all internally. And they're like, did you read that comment? I'm like, no, I didn't. Do I need to? Read it? You know, because it does. It gets you kind of like, oh my gosh, what is, you know? But you just got to keep looking forward. And so, that, that's awesome. That, that's great. So you got kind of a support staff. Whether it's with each other, you know, and, and I make Thomas read my comments. There you go. And that's the real nice thing about hashtag real pig farming and the social forces group that whenever we do have a challenge or we have a post that's gone down a, a, a sour path, we've got a group of people that we can call upon to help support the post we are, talk about what they're doing on their own individual farms and how they're raising their animals, they're growing their crops. That's that's really good and that's a great support system we have within the National Port Board's hashtag real pig farming program. And not only that, but if we have something going on, a conversation going on, lots of times we'll hop out we'll network with each other and be like, Hey, 
you know, it's nice to see another farmer's perspective instead of me just commenting on this. You know, would you want to jump in there and help out? And that's oh, that's so cool. So you that's have people join fun. join your conversation, Chris. I think I'd like just like to have Thomas uh, battle all my comments for me. <laughs> would you be willing to do that? He would. <laughs> I'm sure. Sign me up. <laughs> well, this maybe leads into to the, a question from the audience and. So how much time does it take you? I mean, if you're going to give all your questions to Thomas to answer or Thomas to respond to. But, we, it frees but, up a lot of time yeah, for us. But, but seriously, about how much time, the, the person in the audience, how much time do you take to do the social media stuff? Farming is fast-paced. It's easy to get it caught up in the stuff day to day. And so about how much time do you take, and then how do you juggle that with everything that has to happen on the farm? Depending upon each each and every day on the farm is different. I mean, I try to have some designated times of the day where I try to focus a little bit uh, more upon social media because if you don't, then you become consumed around it. Um, I try to do it usually early in the morning. Um, I do it around lunch, and then typically I'll do a lot of posts in that 10 to 11 p.m. time frame after I put the kids to bed because you got to have a uh, you have to have a balance between uh, your work life, which does in, in, incorporate advocacy and uh, your, your family life. And so, I mean, it, it's really important to, to share what you're doing, but it can be time consuming. And as Aaron was saying, I mean, you can be consumed by the comments on posts and I, Chris can be a lot more than what we can. Um, Not anymore, now that you're Yeah, now that I'm a social media expert. <laughs> you, might, and, you might have to quit your day job. <laughs> I don't know if my father-in-law's ready for that yet. <laughs> But it, it, it does take some time, but it's extremely important to have those conversations, to interject that into your day. Because I, as I met, referenced earlier, it's not, we're not doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for that next generation. Does everybody in here have the ability to take a picture with their phone? There was one person in that last question I asked had a flip phone, they couldn't do it. One person. <laughs> flip phone. There it, still take pictures. <laughs> there it is. Come it's on easy. In. Come on in. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get you set up. Well, you need like a Verizon dealer in here or something. Exactly, yeah. um, About how much time? And I'm not paid by Verizon. Um, so <laughs> the, it is so easy. And this is what I do. And I'm kind of insane. I know it drives words to him go. It drives, kind of drives him crazy. I'm always just taking pictures all day long. And then at night, like, I can't go to sleep because I showed you Snapseed. So I edited all of them. And then it's just like they're there. If I have five minutes, just like throw up a post. So that's why some things seem a little wonky in the timing of things when I post them. It didn't just happen. It might have happened two days ago. But, you know, you have that in your, in your arsenal and you just share them. Because there's so many things to share all day long. There's so many neat things to see. Chris, the same question about how much time or, you know. None now. I'm doing it. <laughs> yeah, Thomas is in charge. Uh, like I said, I I uh, I try to focus on the positive things about agriculture, and there's a great story to tell, and I just focus on telling that story. I, I have a, you know, I, I posted a picture uh, yesterday of us. We finished planting, and, and there's 234 comments on there. There's just no possible way to go through that and 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 deal with all those but uh, and a lot of them are positive too so I, my main focus is, is keeping it simple sending a positive message and uh, in, in you know I think everybody whether you're you, you, you're like Thomas and Aaron and really get into that or like me like I I it's not my number one priority in the day but I want to continue to send that message out there and, and and do it and you know I think that there's no matter who you are just something is better than nothing I, I, and Chris brings up a great point and so you can see the engaged we've got a very engaged panel on social media some more than other and as I look at the audience and the people and and I think of my own situation or our own situation and it doesn't just have to be social media I mean that's what we're talking today don't ever forget that you engage just by having a conversation and don't forget your neighborhood you know we, we it's hard to believe how people don't understand what, how our farms have changed and 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 how things have progressed. And so have that conversation through social media, through one-on-one -on -one talk, whatever it takes. Anybody in the room can do it. We've talked about the negative comments and things like that. What's the funniest question you've got? There's got to be something out there. Chris, you start. What's the funniest question or funniest comment that you've had? Uh, well, I've had a few, quite a few interesting questions. Some I can't remember. Uh, you know, one was that you know, I commonly am asked if what we name all of our pigs. And uh, the other question was, uh, this was on national television, whether or not our alfalfa was organic and, uh, and, and actually what it was and if it was organic. Um, I've, I've been asked as well if we were harvesting in the springtime or you know, they didn't know whether harvest was in spring or fall. 
Um, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of off the wall questions that uh, that I get on a daily basis. Hey, Aaron. Yeah, mine. I kind of narrowed down. Mine's coming from my three year old um, out in South Farm, and he was able to put together the fact that there's a lot of moms out here and there's a lot of babies. Where's all the dads? And so, <laughs> so that was. Yeah, we didn't go, quite go there. We have a couple dads. I showed them those. They're they're ladies, man. So that's it. Um, I actually, I mean, the, I had to talk to my wife last night to to think about what the funniest thing was and kind of tapping into my children. I I was in the farrowing barn with uh, with my daughter Reagan. She's three, and we were uh, we were working with some of the sows one day. And amongst poor producers, I feel comfortable saying this: Dad, where'd your arm go? Oh my. <laughs> But once again, I'm going to bring it up because I brought it up again last night that all those questions we have to remember people really don't know. They simply don't know. And I think sometimes we feel like people are being ignorant of what we do and we can't go at it think, being angry with people. I mean, people really just have no idea. And they're, and they're thirsty for the knowledge and they just need a good source. So. Yeah, you have to be patient with those questions and, and you know, answer them honestly and and, because they honestly want to know that i mean regardless of how elementary the question is it's it's they're they're asking a question and really want to know and have to take the time because some of this stuff this is we've grew up doing all these things and getting those questions may seem like what you know it's not even worth answering because you just have no understanding but take the time and and be patient and answer them as best you can and then laugh at them up. later behind their backs. And then make fun of them when you're when you're at a at a, a forum thing, a family yeah. event. Do we have any other questions from the audience? I don't know where we're at on time, and I if there's any other questions out there. If not, we're going to move on, and then and by all means ask the question. I get you you've heard. I mean, some of the funny questions from the from the mother son in the Fairland barn to to bringing somebody actually out on the farm and then taking a look. And you got to realize we're one and a half percent or one and a half to two percent of the population, and so. I appreciate their comments that there is never a bad question. You know, they just don't understand. And so that's our job here is to help people understand what we do every day. And so um, what was the, you know, we're going to kind of get in. What's the most rewarding thing for you guys to be a pig farmer? Well, you know, we've been told time and time again, feeding the world has no resonance with people anymore, which is unfortunate. But... uh, I mean, that's to me, that's just so cool. That I, I, and growing up in the city and, and what I do every day has such a huge purpose. Um, I, it, it is rewarding. And then the farm tours and being, bringing people through and then seeing people get excited about what I do every day, um, I, I, that's rewarding, too. That's really cool to see people, that, that connection. We let farm tours pull pigs all the time. And that connection, like they pull that pig and they're so excited to dry them off and stuff. I, to see people excited about that is like full circle for me. I like that. What would you tell, just to elaborate just a bit on that, Aaron? I mean, to the people out here, I mean, you obviously bring them right into your farm. I mean, they go through the protocol and anything that you worry about of getting, how do you vet that person or that family that comes out or, um, you know, knowing they don't have an undercover hammer or how? I mean, you're very open. And, and anything you do or just to make sure you're that? It, what, I, what are they going to see that we don't want them to Good see? Point. There's nothing. It, we believe in what we do. And sure, you want to go take a picture of a sow in a crate, make it look bad. You can. You will. And, and that's and that's been done before. But for our, us to be open about what we do, I think people really appreciate that. And so, yeah, I mean, biosecurity, that's, that's simple. And we let them know about our protocols, and they shower in. And, um, and lots of times I think they really appreciate that, that how, the steps that you take to ensure your pig's health. And I, I think they really like that part of things. So truly are opening up and, and here's what we do every day. Thomas, go ahead. What's the most rewarding about being a pig farmer? I mean, kind of building upon some of the sentiments Aaron referenced is whenever you can really make that connection um, with our consumers, that non-farming group that don't understand what we do every day. And like I said before, I mean, they have those mundane, they think some, some of those things that we think are mundane tasks. 
um, that they're very interesting to them. I mean, they have real questions and they have real concerns about where their food's coming from. And um, just by posting pictures on, on Facebook and Twitter, um, we've had families from Chicago and Pennsylvania that have just came down to the farm if they're passing through on vacation um, or they're back in Illinois seeing family. And we had one family from Chicago that came down and, and said, I've always dreamed of holding a baby pig. And it felt really good to be able to make that connection of where their food comes from because she had no idea how pigs were grown and raised. She just saw some cute pictures of baby pigs I was putting on Facebook. She's like, I want to see that pig. And so I was able to make that happen and make that a very rewarding experience. And that really begins to, to fuel the fire and really makes you want to get up every day and just continue to share your farm story, whether it's utilizing social media or on-farm tours or whatever it might be. Chris? Yeah. Uh, I. So there's nothing more rewarding than taking a 12-pound pig and turning it into a 270-pound pig and, and watching those pigs grow and, and be healthy. And the genetics that are out there today are so impressive that, you know, it's, it, there's that hands-on uh, work that you do that you get to see your end result, and your, you know, the, the rewards that come to fruition within six months. It's just a, an exciting uh exciting thing to be a part of and you know on the other hand there's also the you know, the the investment aspect the equity that I've, I've been able to build by you know investing in in pig production has been you know that's that's obviously that's rewarding you know it's a cool there's there's opportunity that's in in pig production for young people and that's what that's what uh, where I got my start so I think that's you know it's exciting to be able to you know, hopefully we can get more youth that, that will come in and, and uh, see the opportunity that we that, that this industry has. Okay, very good. And that's yep. something, I mean, I always elaborate. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. You know, that i got to get it all in. Um, that we've been passionate about and I think is so cool is, you know, people always ask, you know, if you're a larger firm, why do you grow? Or why are you going to be so big? And it's like we don't. We don't grow because we want to be big. We grow because people want us to grow. We grow because young people come to us and they want to get a start in agriculture. So they might put up a pig building for us, and we can't. You can't turn that down. You know, that's that's the core of it all. And so we, you know, we grow because the community basically asks us to grow, and, and they appreciate us being there. And and that's just a really neat thing. And and that's the part that I don't think people. They don't. I mean, I know people don't see and don't understand. You know, you don't grow because you want to be big. You. I mean. And, and what better people to grow than people that are really passionate about what they do. That, that's an awesome comment. And it, you can see the passion up here on every one of them. And everyone's a little different of why they love being a pig farmer and why they're doing the things that they do every day. And everybody in this audience and on these grounds has some connection to the pig industry and they've got a passion for it. So that's awesome. I think we're getting close to winding down here as the time-wise probably. I guess I'd like some closing comments. Or is there any other questions before we kind of close things out? Just raise your hand if you... Oh, yeah. Did, did everybody hear the question? Basically, his comment was, the fun part, we talked about the raising and pulling pigs and seeing the babies grow, but ultimately they're going to be food. And so how do they, can they make that connection with the audience? Is that fair? Yep. Can you, do you relay that, that eventually it's that bacon that we're talking about here? And so how do you address that? Whoever wants to go. Whenever we begin to have those conversations, because with there are certain segments of uh, our online social community that go straight to that. Well, you guys just slaughter animals. You just kill animals. But we raise pigs as a food animal. They have a higher purpose. I mean, they, they nourish not only our own families, but families across the world. And as Aaron said earlier, um, a lot of our consumers aren't satisfied with that response like they were before. But we raise animals in a way that we provide care, we provide compassion, and we provide them the most comfortable environment while we are taking care of them. But we realize that they have a higher purpose. It's not just gruesome. And sometimes whenever you're having those conversations with individuals that go straight to that topic, um, and that's whenever you have to begin to kind of filter through the conversation, what they're really looking for, what their true question is. And if, it, if it, they do have a heartfelt question, try to answer it. But if they go straight to that, Typically, they're just looking to divulge into a conversation that you probably, a path you don't want to go down anyway. Yeah, you know, for those conversations for me, I mean, we have to be on the same playing field as far as you understand that these pigs are being raised for food. We have to, usually if they're not on that playing field, that, that's a very difficult conversation. But once you, if you start there, that we're both on the same page, that we do understand that, you know, then I, I mean... The only way I feel about it is if, if they are being raised for food, don't you want them being raised by me who cares for them every day and does all these things to make sure that they are healthy and comfortable, you know, all throughout their life? I, you know, I don't know what else you would want, you know, for them. Um, but I, 
for me, for those conversations, we got to be on that same, in that same ballpark. <laughs> Thomas, you probably take on some that are not <laughs> on that same ballpark, but that's okay. That's good that you're good at it. Chris, would you like to answer? I mean, yeah, I mean, I could just kind of echo what they've all said. It, it, they're all, you know, just focus on the positives again. That the, the pigs have all been raised humanely. That you know, the final end is as humane as possible, and they're, you know raised for a purpose and we're feeding the world and, and that's what has to happen to, to feed the world. And that being said with the, all the elementary kids and kindergartners, I mean they all know what pigs are. No, we don't describe the slaughter process in detail to them when they come to the farm. They all know that they are bacon. I mean, kids know that pigs are food. Even kids know that. I mean, so I don't, I don't know. I guess I don't know if I answered that right. Yep, no, I, I think that's, Mike, you've got another question? Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Well, good. I think we're, if there's no other questions from the audience, I guess to, to, as a wrap-up, I'd like each of you to not only, for me, thank you for being part of that. Thank you to the audience for being here and being engaged and giving us your questions. I guess in a wrap-up, I'd like each of you to I'd like everybody in this room, when they leave, to have the confidence that they can go out and do something, engage. And so give your perspective and, and uh, your final comments. I mean, it, utilizing social media is extremely easy. I mean, it's simple as taking a picture. And Aaron and I, we, 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 we should be getting paid by Google because we've been talking about Snapseed a lot this week <laughs> um, to do some quick editing to pictures. Um, but utilizing social media is extremely simple. It's just taking a picture, posting it to Facebook, because there's somebody out there telling your farm story today, and it might not always be in the most positive light. So it's not only our job just to take care of the animals, it's our job to take, tell our farm stories, talk about what we're doing every single day, and utilizing social media to do that. Because whenever people are telling our stories and they have no idea what we're doing, the passion that we have and the care that we put into raising these animals or growing our crops, it becomes another job of ours, another task of ours every day, just to continue to help educate the consuming public. Yeah, I think, uh, in, like, I didn't grow up on a farm, but I think there was a period where you didn't need to, I mean, there obviously was a period. You didn't need to do that. Everybody knew what you did. Um, so, that, you know, there's some hesitant. See if that's a that word. Um, hesitation um, for doing that, but I think really, honestly, we have to. I mean, it is not an option anymore. I don't think um, information can be shared so fast, and it can be so wrong, and and we really all need to go out there in full force and do it. And it's, it doesn't have to be what what we do on social media to that capacity. It could just be a picture here and there. Um, uh, or, you know, feed line's broken. I, I don't know. But, um, you know, I really do think we're at the point where we really all need to step up and, and do this and, and share this because some people are out there telling your story. And I don't know if you've been out in the social media world of it, but it, lots of it is um, is not pretty. So we, we, we want to make sure we're doing it right and, and sharing it. Chris? Yeah, I mean, to echo with these guys, uh, again, I mean, we have a great story to tell, and we need to be proud of what we're doing here. People want to hear the story. I mean, that's, that's and, and to, we don't have to focus on the negative. People want, there's a lot of people, there's a, a minor percentage that do focus on the negative and, and throw, throw bad comments at us, but there's a lot of people that just want to know, and, uh, and we have a responsibility as those in agriculture to tell the story now, because we are 1% to 2% of the population, and and uh, and it's not that hard, and uh, you can have fun with it. And and uh, but my main thing: be proud and and uh, and and show what you got going on. Thank you. And I guess just a couple things. And and I'm getting off the National Pork Board, but there's some programs out there, and you guys have a support staff. The National Pork Board, this real pig farming hashtag that you see on the back of of our shirts. I think right now our VP of Communication is out in New York because they're up for an award. And just think about that. One year ago, it was launched at World Pork Expo and we're in the process of getting possibly getting the, the top award for the social media in New York right as of today. And so everybody in the room that's been involved with that, thank you for doing that. There's Operation Main Street, which is more going out and speaking to, I don't care if it's a group of five people or a group of 500, there's training on that. And so the National Pork Board is a good resource to get some of the things that you need to have the confidence to go out there. And so with that, I would just like to say thank you to our panel. Uh, I'm sure they would like to visit with you afterwards if you've got some time. Um, 
Thank you for being involved the way you are, promoting our industry, and being proud of what you do every day. So let's give them a nice round of applause.